top decision makers at the world's leading telcos are facing a new set of challenges, considerations and opportunities. So I'm talking today with Howard Watson. He's the CTIO at the BT Group. So Howard, great to speak to you again. Um, how has 2020 been for you and BT? What kind of impact has the COVID-19 pandemic had on you and BT? Uh, great to be here again, Ray, and good to talk to you. And, and I guess a good place to start that because you know, if I cast my mind back to February, March, I remember as at one point we were inundated with questions from journalists, but also from some of our large sort of UK based business customers about will the network cope um, with everybody moving to work from home? And we were quite bold. And in fact, I remember doing a video blog, middle of March saying, yes, it will cope. Our network is driven primarily by evening peak demand. So actually adding work from home um, across the UK uh, onto that network will be fine. Um, and it was, but having said that, we did carry a lot of traffic. Our daytime uh, demand doubled, um, still not quite as high as the peak in the evening. Uh, average speeds for customers through that period increased by 15%. Um, and we also saw, a, saw a, a bit of a shift in terms of usage. I mean, not unsurprisingly, uh, on our mobile network, things like the messaging apps, um, you know, WhatsApp, Teams, Skype, house party, et cetera, saw really big soaring in demand as did Zoom. Um, you know, and also many of the sort of games platforms um, have had meteoric rises. Uh, one that I was particularly pleased to see is Strava usage up by a factor of three. So it's been a great time for telco networks as we've been through this really tough pandemic. Uh, and I think it's put us as telcos back on the national map again. Yeah, very much so. The resiliency of the networks has really shone through this year. Uh, and of course, this situation has come about just as the, the, the telecom sector and, and the operators are going through a, a monumental transition, uh, one that where the networks are becoming much more cloud oriented. Um, how is that impacting your job, your role at BT? You know, and that again, I think is, as you say, really impactful. And we really are at a sort of sea change moment where, uh, you know, what we what we call network cloud, which we're rolling out now across each of our significant, you know, large metro node locations in the UK. Um, and this is a cloud native way of building future network technology. So it's way beyond the you know, a box for every function. It's way beyond virtualization, which is just purely optimizing the infrastructure. This is, you know, really taking cloud native capabilities in how we build future capabilities in the network. And for us, that very much starts with our 5G core. Um, our new 5G core that we're building right now uh, is now into trials. Uh, and we're already seeing the benefits of that cloud native capability there. As the network changes, as the functionalities change, are you engaging with your vendors, your technology partners in a different way? Well, I mean, first of all, that landscape's changed somewhat. So, um, you know, one of our large uh, previous vendors in the mobile space, uh, we're now moving away from. I think that's a well-known and understood and trodden path this year. Um, we are certainly it's increased our relationship with both traditional vendors of Nokia and Ericsson and the teams did a great job in terms of, you know, uh, liaising, negotiating, building partnerships uh, with those two companies in particular. Um, Ericsson, for example, is, you know, behind that mobile uh, 5G core that I just talked about. But increasingly, we also have relationships with you know, some of the hyperscalers. So we talk regularly to Amazon, Google, and Microsoft about things like the network edge and how will that play out from a telco perspective, but also from a hyperscaler perspective. Um, and, you know, other uh, more cloud native partners um, are actually now in the dialogue that might historically have been with the IT department and now very much been talked about and with from a network perspective. And um, on that point, is this changing? I mean, it used to be that if a company wanted to engage with BT, get tested, get trialed, 
boxes would have to be shipped, networks would have to be built out at Adastral Park or other places. Is the more software oriented way of doing things these days changing those processes? Are you able to test, trial, evaluate new technologies in a quicker, simpler or easier way at all? I would, I would say um, that is absolutely in the plans. I mean, I probably need another year before I can sit here and say, you know, we've got A-B testing in different parts of the network and we, you know, we applied that uh, virtual function last night and trialed that and then took it down again, did a little bit of more iteration to the software and reloaded it back on. But that is not far away now. And so, yes, you're right. What was historically, you know, a piece, a network component going into our large test models in Adastral Park and spending in many cases months um, proving those through, that model is radically changing now. The two will coexist because there's still parts of the network that will take that latter approach. Uh, but increasingly for new services and new capabilities, it's a, you know, a virtualized function that we deploy, A-B test and iterate. Now, you mentioned before uh, that you're talking more and more frequently uh, with the, the hyperscalers, the public cloud giants. Is there anything that telcos like BT need to do in particular to be able to interoperate and work with those public cloud platforms? I think, I mean, I think generally, uh, as well as the transformation that, that's happening around the networks, and in particular, as we, you know, re-architect our core networks. And for us, you know, that's as much about converging our fixed and mobile core to bring to life some of the smart network things I've talked to you about in the past, Ray. Um, the other transformation is absolutely in the IT space and modernizing the IT that sits alongside the network, ensuring that it's API driven and ensuring that we have APIs at the right levels in the network. So at the infrastructure level, at the sort of connectivity plus level, as we call it, and at the application level and making sure that we can publish the right parts of those APIs to all partners, you know, whether they're of the hyperscaler scale or whether they're smaller developers that we want to partner with. So that that is also a, a real transformation that's happening right now. Now, mixed in with all the developments ongoing, particularly with the rollout of, of 5G, um, are the, the, the focus areas or, or the topics of uh, power consumption and sustainability eating up more of your focus, attention and time these days? Yeah, I mean, that, especially power consumption and um, let, I'll come back to 5G, but first of all, in the fixed network, I mean, we, we as BT represent approaching about 1% of the entire UK power consumption. Um, and actually a, approaching half of that is on the legacy uh, public switch telephone network, the private circuits. Uh, that run on historic PDH and SDH networks. So migrating our customers to modern IP variants of that capability really does unleash the ability to have a big impact in reducing our power consumption. So that's one area. And just, you know, just some data points there. Um, you know, we, we look at, you know, gigabytes or watts per gigabyte per month. Um, and on the PSTN, it's something like uh, 17. I think I've got the number in front of me here. I see 17 uh, watts per gigabyte per month. Um, even with a technology like FTTP, that's down at 0 0.05. So that's a mixture of, the, you know, the amazing extra bandwidth we get, but also the it's 30 years newer technology and the significantly lower power consumption. So I'm very much on the agenda and. Clearly, coming back to your original point on 5G, the extra spectral efficiency of 5G and the extra benefit of lower power consumption is something we also take critically seriously. And with 5G, uh, there's been quite a few studies looking at the much more um, distributed uh, nature of 5G networks and, and the greater use of, of small cells and Pico nodes is that going to impact the, the, the power consumption and, and, and the levels of power used by the network? And is there a way that that can be counteracted or is, is all of this kind of in the, in the development path of all the, the companies you're working with? I, I still think these 
there's work to do for our you know partner suppliers in terms of ensuring that everybody is focused on I mean, the way I would describe it is, you know, watts per bit per hertz. So as well as spectral efficiency, it's on power consumption to achieve that spectral efficiency. Um, and I do think that, yes, you're right, that as we densify the networks, you know, and move from 19,000 macro sites and add in small cells as part of that densification journey, we've got to make sure that we are, you know, not eroding that, you know, whether they call it kilowatt hour per bit per hertz, um, you know, the key measure there, because, you know, again, that power consumption piece is a real, it's a really important part of the sustainability. It fits with BT's purpose of We Connect for Good, um, you know, and also economically, it makes loads of sense as well. So uh, lots going on, lots of things to juggle. And obviously you need a lot of help and input from your partners and suppliers but also from industry associations, I guess. What would you most like to, to see in 2021 from your technology partners and from the industry associations that, that have an impact on the way the telecoms industry runs? I would say um, continue to encourage us to work together. And by that, I mean the, you know, the operators in the UK in the right areas. I think uh, there's a lot changing right now you know, very topical at the moment is the tele telecom security requirements. Uh, you know, those need to be applied to everybody. That needs to be a level playing field. We've got to make sure that the UK as a whole, um, irrespective of the size of operator, uh, has the same uh, requirements in place there. So that's that's one area where we, we need to work together to ensure that we are, you know, continuing in our responsibility running the critical national infrastructure. The other area is, you know, I encourage the work that we're seeing around supply chain diversity. Um, and we, you know, we're leaning in and my fellow operators are leaning into the work there sponsored by DCMS and the task force that's being run by uh, Ian Livingston there. Um, and then I think more broadly, you know, let's just keep working together in, some, in many respects on the use cases. You know, we all compete with each other, but we all have a shared common interest to actually bring revenue growth back into the telco sector. And in many cases, I think that collective goal trumps our individual um, goals. Yes, we'll always compete with each other, but actually ensuring we build a thriving ecosystem here is really critical to all of us. Now, one of the benefits of cloud platforms is the greater availability of content on demand. Well, it certainly, are, it certainly is busy times at the moment. And I do think that, um, you know, each of the people that play a role there, you know, can certainly stimulate our, the operators in the UK industry, which as we know is vast and has many players to work together. Um, and some examples I would give is a very topical one right now are the telecommunication security requirements. Uh, you know, we should make sure we all implement those uh, together as a level playing field, you know, everybody needs to effectively do the same thing there because it's critical to the critical national infrastructure of the UK. So that's one example. Uh, I welcome what's happening sponsored by DCMS on supply chain diversity and the work that Ian Livingston's leading in the task force there. We're leaning into that. I know many of my colleagues are also. And then I just think we all share a common goal of the telco ecosystem thriving and growing revenue. And that comes back to use cases and where do we see demand? And yes, we compete in a lot of that, but I think we also share the sort of higher common goal of getting revenue growth back. So, you know, often you know, competition law means that there are restrictions as to what operators can talk about amongst each other, but actually the associations can help drive that, um, rebound and bounce back, I think, of the telco sector. And so let's all look forward to that. OK, absolutely. Very much so. Um, now, of course, one of the, the great benefits of a more uh, cloud platform oriented society is the greater availability of on demand content. So, Howard, possibly the toughest question you're going to get today. What is your favorite film of all time? Oh, blimey. Um... I'm going to give you two answers to that, uh, Ray. One is um, 
I'm into, I quite like musicals. So right now, my greatest film, if you ask me, would actually be The Greatest Showman. Um, but second to that, I would have to say it's, you know, if you, the movie that can bring you to tears for me is probably something like Schindler's List. There's a bit of a historic epic there. Okay, excellent. Well, uh, many people I ask that question do not limit themselves to two. Uh, so uh, thank you for, for holding back there and, uh, and, and great choices, great selection. Howard, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. Thanks very much for your time. Pleasure as always. Thank you, Ray.